Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of Watch Collection. Uh, today what I want to talk about is something that's been on my mind for some time. And, and I really never got the kind of answer that I wanted. A lot of people had speculations and so forth. But, but this is, why is it that all of my best watches had were at three hertz or less? Now, your typical uh, frequency for watches is four hertz or 28,800 vibrations per hour VPH. But um, all of my, all of my really best ones were running at three hertz or less than three hertz. Uh, by the way, worst watch check, I'm wearing my Vesteron Constantin uh, Resonance. Okay, and it's one of the one of the watches there. So uh, the two FP Jorns are running at 3 hertz, and the H Moser at C is running at 2.5 hertz. In fact, I think all of them do. Um, 21,600 vibrations per hour is 3 hertz. 2.5 hertz is 18,000. So, okay, um, that those were nice watches. They were my best watches. And I found some other ones. My uh, Patek Philippe, my particular one, my little Calatrava was running at uh, 3 hertz. Uh, so was my, uh, my, my Jacques uh, 736. I call it that. This is uh, my watch with the 736 in it, the Jacques 736, um, uh, Maurice Lacroix. Turned out to be a really neat watch. And one of my much maligned El Ra uh, with its uh, Pazu 7001 uh, was also running at uh, 3 hertz. And so I thought, well, you know, there's, you know, but I mean, that's not a big deal. The big deal was is that my really good ones were. So I started looking around. I started finding other watches from the very best watch companies that were also running at 3 hertz or less than 3 hertz, whereas your most popular watches were running at 4 hertz or more than 3 hertz. Um, I think Omega has one that's between 3 and 4 hertz. Okay, so how am I going to resolve that? Well, when <laughs> there was, you know, when nobody really knew, including my, uh, my friend who's a... Um, uh, really a very good watchmaker. He's the one who had been a judge for the Grand Prix de Rologie de Genève. Okay, so uh, what I decided to do when I went to the Watch Time show, uh, I'd see who were some of the top-notch people there in the in the field of independent uh, watchmakers and not so independent ones, and ask them. So that's what I'm going to do now. What I've done. I'm going to start off with the an example of the watch, the name of the company, and then the name of the uh, the name of the person that I talked to, and let them explain it. And then at the end, I'll try to I'll try to wrap it up. Okay. All right. Um, so let's get started. Now the first one, uh, when I came in the door <laughs> of the uh, of the show, uh, there was Beauvais, and it just so happened that I had on my Beauvais, and so did my wife. And uh, this particular uh, Beauvais, uh, the one shown here, the Recital Twenty Two Grand uh, Recital, uh, the caliber model is 17D M03 TEL. It's a hand hand wound. That's the other thing too. I love hand wounds. All of my favorite watches are hand wound, and all my best ones are hand wound, except my Palmer Giannis. <laughs> they're among my favorite too, but they're all both of them are um, automatic. Okay, well, so this is this is running at two and a half hertz, uh, 18,000 VPH with nine day. Uh, power reserve. Now the person there's name was uh, Christopher or Christo, well, I'm going to say it wrong, uh, Perzaz. And so I said, listen, you know, I, I you know, why is it that uh, that you have your, your best watches run at, uh, you know, less than three hertz? And this one, he said that this one is two and a half hertz. So 
I, he said, okay. So he interviewed him. By the way, too, I, I don't think <laughs> I pull up my my camera and say, you know, okay, tell me why why this is true. And it's like, <laughs> I, I so I think I made some people feel uncomfortable. So if they look that way, um, it's I don't think they were expecting it. Now, this was Friday night while I was still before I uh, partook. And so anyway, I wanted to get it done. And so I went through and so it was right at the beginning of the show. And they were, I guess, later on, they were used to, the, uh, to watch nerds coming up and asking all kinds of things. Okay, so um, let's see what um, Christopher has to say. Why is it you use a, a, a frequency below 4 hertz? We use low frequency around 2.5 and 3 hertz a lot because by this way we could preserve a long power reserve comfortable for the collectors linked to a perfect chronometry because by using this kind of frequency we could increase the, the weight, the inertia of the balance wheel and by this way we find the perfect balance between chronometry and long power reserve. Great. Okay, the uh, the next person I talked to was Carrie Vooten Lonnen, and uh, Carrie Vooten Lonnen is extremely well known as one of the top independent watchmakers in the world. And uh, when I went to look at his watches, every single one of them, I think, was uh, less than three hertz. And um, this one, and by the way, too, the uh, Beauvais that we just looked at, this was also a finalist in the Grand Prix d'Orologie de Genève. Uh, this is uh, the Wooten Lannan 217QRS. This is also a finalist in the uh, Grand Prix d'Orologie de Genève. And uh, these are manual winding. Again, I love manual winding. Mechanical 18,000 VPH. And this has got a power reserve of... 65 hours. All right, so let's see what uh, Mr. Wooten Lonnen has to say. Why the lower frequency rate? Well, because the frequency has a has an effect for the the precision, but it's also the if you have a higher uh, the frequency, then it's also the question of the the diameter of the balance wheel and the power is uh, I watch because the more higher is the frequency, more we need power and less longer the watch will run. But we are able to do also precise watch with 18,000. So it's, 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 a, it's a choice is afterwards. And I prefer have a large balance wheel and a long power reserve, as we have about 70 hours. So that's what I prefer. <laughs> All right, well, let's now go on. The uh, one of the main people I wanted to see at the show uh, was Marco Lang. Now, this was the first time that uh, Lang and Hein had shown at this show. That's the same true with Beauvais. Very fortunate this year. And uh, so Marco Lang was there. And uh, th this is this is my Grail watch. So naturally, I ask about it. But all of his uh, watches are under are three hertz or less. Uh, this particular one, called the Caliber uh, 6, has this, what's, what he calls the trigonal bridge. And uh, again, it's manual wind. It's got a 55-hour reserve, and it ticks at uh, 18,000 vibrations per hour. And so, like the others, I said, well, well what's going on? Why this, this uh, lower rate? And so let's see what he has to say. Uh, why below 4 hertz? Yes. Uh, you can, uh, to make a watch pre precise, you can uh, go in two directions. With a smaller balance and more frequency, or with a bigger balance in, the, in, a, in, a, in a smaller frequency. So we uh, like to make uh, the, the balance not so fast. We like to, to have 18,000 semi-oscillations because it looks nicer. You you feel the ticking of the balance, and uh, it looks not hectic. That's maybe the most, uh, the best uh, reason for this. Now, uh, Roland Murphy is the and RGM watches. I think is sort of like the only 
high horology uh, watchmaker in the U.S. And uh, his he uses a combination of movements, some of which he makes himself, uh, others that he uses from other sources, from the lower priced watches or ETA based or Solid or something like that, whereas the higher ones are based on ones that he makes or ones that are special. By the way, too, the uh, the Jacques 736, uh, Roland Murphy has some of the original ones, not the ones that were from um, La Joux Pereira, who took over after uh, Senor <laughs> Jacques had to go to jail. Uh, but but here's one. This is the manual wind, and this is this is my favorite. This is my favorite of the ones that uh, Roland Murphy made. Not only is it shaped, uh, but it's also interesting. It's a beautiful movement, and um, it's called the Caliber Twenty, and, and that's also the name of the watch. Uh, there's some other ones uh, that he made other calibers, and they're named the watches and the caliber the same. Uh, this one's my favorite, though. It has uh, something in it that was an American-made one from back in the days called the motor barrel system. So uh, I asked Roland Murphy about, you know, why. I, and again, these are not three hertz. These are all two and a half hertz. <laughs> and it, that just happened that way. It wasn't something I planned. The people who were there I talked to and that's where it turned out was all of them are 18,000 vibration per hour or uh, two and a half hertz. Okay, let's see what Roland uh, Murphy has to say. I'll start off with that. Why is it that the movements that you made, the ones that are in-house, were under four hertz? Well, we like to, we make very classic watches. So we like a, a larger balance. Um, we have a, a movement then that is visually more appealing. Uh, the slower beat movements, you can have a larger balance. Um, also, um, there are some compromises when you get into really fast beat movements with uh, wear and, and uh, lubrication, things like that. So making the kind of classic watches that we do at RGM, the larger movements and things, it's a lot more visually appealing to have a balance that, that suits the size uh, of the movement. And, uh, and we know it's a proven technology that, that's going to last. That's now this next one, I wasn't expecting. Okay, it was, I started talking to this uh, rep at uh, Mont Blanc and the, uh, the 1858 Mono Pusher Chronograph. Now, on the wall behind the uh, Mont Blanc, uh, they had a big sign that says Mont Blanc, and then underneath it said 160 years of Minerva. And Minerva was the ones who make this movement. And uh, this is another finalist in the Grand Prix, this happened to be. And it's, again, it's 18,000 vibrations uh, per hour, manual wind again. So uh, I, I was I was talking to him first about the uh, sort of the relationship between Mont Blanc and Minerva, and he's talked about that. And then I s said, oh, you know, could you tell me something about the, why is it at 18,000 hertz? He says, yeah, so he went on to that. So it's a little longer. I mean, none of these, I think, most of them are under a minute, but they what they have to say, they have to say. And so uh, let's see what uh, Zachary Gilbert from uh, Mont Blanc has to say. Okay, hi. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Uh, this is about the Minerva movement. Tell me, could you tell me about the relationship between uh, Mont Blanc and uh, Minerva? Yes, so Mont Blanc actually acquired Minerva in 2007. Rishma itself acquired it in 2006 and then gifted it to us. So with that um, history that goes back to 1858 and most of our pieces here in our boutiques are going to be based off of vintage Minerva pieces. So you're going to have the Geosphere, which is based off of the vintage 18, um, 1920s, 1930s Minerva Mountain Watch. Time Walker is going to be based off of the vintage 1920s um, Raleigh Timer and race cars. What's the frequency uh, that they're using? So most commonly with these pieces, it's going to be about 2.5 hertz. 
Okay. That's Geosphere awesome. are 4 hertz and then Time Walkers are 2.5. That's great to know. All yep. of the really good movements. Yep. Uh, Perry Wooten, Monon, uh, FP Zorn, all of them are the lower speed and you know, uh, H motion. Correct. Why is it that uh, <laughs> putting you on the spot? Oh, no, it's fine. Uh, Go for it. <laughs> Why is it you prefer the lower uh, movement, uh, under 4 hertz? So honestly, with those lower movements, it's just the under the 4 hertz, you can kind of get more accuracy in some of the timepieces. And another cool thing is we make a lot of our own balance springs. So Mont Blanc's one of the only manufacturers that can make those balance springs by hand, so they take pride in the hertz of their pieces. Great. Okay, uh, this last one by... Uh, Akrivia. This is another one. The first year that they had come to this show, and a lot of people were very, very interested in this uh, in this watchmaker. Uh, the watchmaker's name is uh, Rex Hep, Rex Hepi, and uh, his watch company is called Akrivia. And this particular one, uh, Chronomet Contemporane. Sorry about the pronunciation. Now this was a very difficult interview. Um, because he really didn't understand what I was asking. I wanted to know why is it that you, your watch was made with under, under four hertz. And uh, in this case, again, 18,000 vibrations per hour, it's, <laughs> that's two and a half hertz. Okay, so, um, but, uh, too, it, it see, I think that all of the Moser at sea are 18,000 uh, vibrations per hour. That's another sort of thing. They're all two and a half hertz. Okay, this one is too. Now, uh, this ended up being very short. I think he felt very frustrated because I didn't speak French, and God forbid I try to speak French. It would be more confusing. But we had an interview in French, and then he came back and said, oh, okay, this is what it is in English. So this is the this is a big part of it that's in English, very short, but very to the point. Let's see what uh, Rex Hep Rex Happy has to say. All right, go ahead. Okay, I chose uh, that frequency because uh, the balance is more lower and and uh, you can see more the move, you know, and that's just simple. I use that because. It's more lower, and you can see better. It's more animated. Okay, um, you could the, you could see from all of those uh, different recordings that there was a lot of background noise and so forth. And but one of the things is that they, uh, especially uh, Lang and I think um, Roland Murphy said, is that you can you know there's a a certain amount of you, you can look at it and you can see it better. I think the um, Rex Hep uh, Rex Heppy had said the same thing. It's just you know you can see it, you can look at it, you can feel it. And so what it, I think what you're we're really hearing is the voices of craftsmen, the craftsmanship. And if you can't see it, um, then what is the whole point of having these the kind of level of craftsmanship? I mean, if you got a solid back, you can't see anything. Um, <laughs> I mean, you might as well get a quartz because a quartz is going to be the most accurate. And I, but looking at this, I think is that without being able to see. Uh, and especially in something like a resonance with uh, two balance wheels to look at. So uh, let me uh, review. I made some notes here of what everyone had to say. This is the longer power reserve. That's one thing. The increased inertia of the balance wheel. You can have a, a larger balance wheel with the, and, and increase the inertia. More uh, visually appe appealing is one thing. Uh, better wear, which is nice, because uh, that means less service. Uh, and then one of the things, the guy from uh, Mont Blanc talking about the their relationship with Minerva, is that they were talking about pairing the, I think he was, he was talking about 
pairing the spring, the, the hairspring that they make themselves with the speed. In other words, you can have, you want a certain size balance wheel, you want a certain other kinds of things. And if you make your own hairsprings and uh, for the balance wheel, that determines uh, the speed. So, I mean, listening to these guys, and especially, you know, the if you're a young guy getting into um, into watchmaking, these things are, are, are very important. And I think for collectors, uh, I, I think we, we, this is the kind of thing that at least I look for. I think it's important. And um, so anyway, so there it is. Uh, the mystery is, I hope, solved <laughs> to some extent. Some of my favorite watches are 4 hertz. Um, some people have, you know, the really high speed, uh, the uh, high beat uh, Grand Seikos. Now, they do have a higher beat, and they don't, you're, you're not going to be able to have the advantages that the lower speeds have. But there are other advantages, too, in terms of accuracy and so forth. Uh, now, this one, this is my harboring, too, and this was, this was done by a guy who's very much of a craftsman. I'm very proud of the fact. And I was looking at his. Now, this is at 4 hertz, but it was set up so you, and it seemed to have a little larger balance wheel than some of the other ones of the same, of the same speed. So it's sort of like he still wanted to be able to see his work and do some interesting things. But that's that's the best I could come up with, and and to, but to me, it's a very interesting uh, responses they had. Uh, the best part is that I've been working with sixty four ninety sevens and sixty four ninety eights uh, ETAs or Unitas, and all of them are either two and a half or three hertz. An interesting fact, a fun fact is that the ETA 6497-98-1 are the slower speeds. They're at 3 hertz. And I'm sorry, at 2.5 hertz. They're at, they run at 18,000 vibrations per hour. The newer ones, the Dash 2, they run at right at 3 hertz, uh, 21,600 uh, vibrations per hour. So it, it's sort of an interesting kind of thing to try to find out about. And uh, I'm really, I, I, I can't thank the guys who uh, were nice enough in the middle of a show. <laughs> Some nerd comes up and says, hey, how come you do this? <laughs> oh, brother. And, but I, I, I really do appreciate it. And I think as collectors, we should appreciate it too, because at least we, we have some idea of what we're collecting. Okay, uh, so this is uh, Bill Sanders for Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection. And as always, this is an invitation to subscribe if you like. More importantly, though, I really like to hear from you, see what you think. Uh, you heard the same uh, interview responses that I did. If there was something else that is more or different that you c came away with, that's great. I'd like to hear that too. Oh, okay, so. Uh, hope to see you Sunday, and until then, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Side, the art and science of watch collection.